scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever. The, the book answers the question that Jesus can be revealed. Not the personality of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus. And the Bible says it is God that gives men that revelation. The very next sentence tells you it is exclusive to the office of the Father to authorize who will be able to have access to the revelation of the Christ. Are we still together? So Jesus can be revealed. Just because he is so mighty and he shrouds himself with mysteries does not mean he cannot be revealed. It is the character of the revelation of him. He is so big and mighty, it takes eternity to know him. However, we are mandated to continue to know him. So in the worship of the Lamb, they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was. That's a dimension of him. Who was. The dealings of God as revealed in the past. And whilst they are trying to appreciate that dealing, they now see who is. What he is doing in the now. And then there is a revelation that says there is another one to come. So when you have exhausted who is, there is still another dimension to come. Now listen, this was the revelation that led to the worship of the Lamb. It was, they didn't want to do it. That means true worship is a response to a revelation of the Christ. That whilst you are exhausting the one who was, then you will now see the one who is. And then to know that when you exhaust the one who is, there is still another one to come. Now, listen, it is important. Um, you won't believe I've not started my message. We are going to pray. This is a prayer point. Praise the Lord. Lucifer. Did you know Lucifer's assignment before the fall? He was called the light bearer. Lucifer was not just a musician. Lucifer was the librarian of heaven. He was the custodian of the light, the mysteries of God. Now, Lucifer did not know that there was more to God. Because you see, the system of God is that he will always test you with growth. If you are faithful in what he gives you, then he will increase it. Now, but the pride of Lucifer made him to believe that all that he had was all that was in God. It was on the strength of that revelation he could lead a rebellion. That if this is all that God is, then I know him. I'm trying to explain to you Revelations 4 and 5. We are praying. So when Lucifer led that rebellion, because he, Lucifer did not want to dethrone God. No, Lucifer wanted to run a parallel government. So you could choose whether God or him. It's still the Antichrist system today. Anytime the spirit of the Antichrist is represented, it will seek to run a parallel government. But the jealousy of God will not allow another to be in his stead. Are we together? So the Bible says there was war in heaven. And when there was war in heaven, it surprised Lucifer because God did not fight. 
Now, that's a level of intelligence that surprised Lucifer. The battle ended with Michael. And he was cast down to the earth, the Bible says, and there was no more space. Listen, when the battle happened, every inhabitant in heaven watched. So when they are saying who was, they knew what they were saying. There is an old story, the victor who was, the conqueror who was, then who is, and then in case there is any form of rebellion, there is still provision in his economy to manage any kind of thing. Who was, who is, and who is to come. This is the one that we worship. Hallelujah. So that revelation is powerful because Christ can be revealed. Jesus wants to be known. He wants the saints to not only serve him, but to know him. It's not enough to just serve him. We must know him. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed. You can believe who you do not know. Like they did in the Bible. A certain city, they came and they served a God they did not know the name. But Paul said, I don't just want to follow blindly. Now we can pray. I can begin my sermon. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. That's the Christ who wants to reveal himself. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety-nine. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. Daniel chapter 11. Let's do a little teaching and then we'll pray. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, the B part. The Bible says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Let's read the B part together. Ready? Read. But the people that do know their God, uh -huh, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. One more time, please, from the B part. But the people that do know their God. I want us to discuss tonight on knowing God. It's important that the church be taught the mysteries that make for the knowledge of God. The Bible here begins by telling us that it is possible for a man to know God. And then it says, but the people that do know their God, that there are two rewards that are left with any believer who is determined to know God. Number one is strength, capacity. That whoever will go out of the box to press, to know this God, the reward for that pursuit, number one, is strength. And remember the Bible says that if you fail in the day of battle, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. Are we together? The people that do know their God, they shall be strong. And then number two, they shall do exploits. That means that you can easily know the people that know God by these possibilities in their lives. That when you see a believer sustaining a degree of strength and stamina, I was so blessed by the play that um, 
one that the children acted and then the dear ladies because it was a play that was a revelation of stamina and that is not something that comes with biological or physical strength there is something about the knowledge of God that can keep a man under fire still laughing it was the psalmist that said the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of you know you are growing when what made you cry yesterday can no longer make you cry today it is proof that you have sustained stamina in the spirit and the kind of generation that we are raising if we do not mentor people to build stamina in the spirit many will not survive because the vicissitudes of life have a way of speaking against the integrity of God. But like Job, you can say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I have sustained an ability to call him faithful, regardless whatever happens. Now, that is a Christian. The Bible gives us the, the chronicles of men and women who are called the fathers, the patriarchs of faith. When you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible tells us now, it says, verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It calls it the evidence of things not seen. And then the Bible says, for by that faith the elders obtained. That means every testimony that followed their manifesting faith is called a good report, including death, a good report. Are you following this scripture now? Then the Bible says, through faith we understand, verse 3, that the walls, the cosmos was framed by the word of God. So that the things that appear, that they came from a realm that was invisible, it now leads, continues, by faith Abel offered, by faith this happened. Then the Bible says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouths of lions, he says, women who received their, de their dead back to life. Then he says, others died without receiving the promise. He called all of them faith. So faith does not only bring to life. Faith can also make to die. And the Bible calls it a good report. Listen, believers. This is the kind of stamina that will be needed in these days. They that know their God, they shall be strong and then they shall do exploits. John chapter 17. Jesus is praying now. This is the real Lord's prayer. What we call theologically speaking as the Lord's prayer was the mentorship session of Jesus. Teaching the disciples to pray. It was part of the Beatitudes. He was teaching them on the character of the kingdom. And in one of those lectures, he began to teach them to pray. But this is Jesus praying to the Father. Are we together? John 17 verse 1. Then these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. Verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Read verse 3 if you are a Christian. Ready? read one to read and this is life eternal uh -huh. that they might know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent wow that means eternal life is not just something you receive alone it's a journey a progressive journey that is the unveiling of the christ so you receive the way the life of god the spirit of god but the knowledge of the Holy One is a journey that you will continually explore. And the Bible says this is life eternal. The pursuit to know Him. Hallelujah. It is powerful to know God. I think for me, I would argue that the challenge with our generation is that we are not a people of conviction. We are a people of loyalty. Correct. We are a people of education. Correct. We are a people of intelligence, correct, but we are not a people of conviction. Our convictions dwindle at every challenge. It is proof that there is no confidence. The early church were people, men and women with solid conviction. They would die smiling. 
because they 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 stood upon something that was more real than any challenge now for instance you can find an individual just having a delay one two years and is enough to back out of the christian faith it is proof that you do not know god there is something about god when you know it's like occult it's an initiation it is still death do you part in fact not even death can do you part are we together conviction you are strengthened you are not trying to allow god bless you to prove he is faithful you have been you have come to a point where what he does or does not do has nothing to do with your definition of who he is you know he is faithful that you can stand before a dead body and still say lord you are faithful while you are casting that dead body to the ground and people say i think you should find fault with god and you say no he ever remains faithful my experience is too small scripture has been proven tried seven times so if god is called faithful and true then let god be true and every man including me and my situation be a liar is god helping us so the bible says that the people who know their God, they will have strength, stamina, stamina, the fortitude to remain, the ability to be unbending, that when all is said and done, you are still standing. He says, haven't done all to stand, stand. The Bible also reveals to us that God wants to be known again and again jeremiah chapter 9 please then i'll share one or two things i hope that we gain time jeremiah 9 from verse 23 the bible says the pride of the believer in this kingdom please look up i believe in prosperity i believe in the blessings of the lord i believe in increase i believe in influence but in this kingdom the real pride of a believer is not in things the real pride of a believer is not in accolades and the achievements. For Solomon called it vanity. He said all is vanity, not some. All is vanity. Are we together? This here, ladies and gentlemen, is the pride of the believer in this kingdom. And here's what it says. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glorieth, glory in this, help me, that he understandeth and knoweth me. This is the pride of the believer. That if ever there is a reason to make any boast in the Lord, it should be on the strength of the vastness of your knowledge of who God is. So we are exploring the depths of the knowledge of God. Did you know that the average Christian does not know God? ask the average christian who is god or who is jesus they will speak from a historical standpoint the son of mary so and so and so on and notice that it, it may not be the fault of that believer now let's 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 deal with scripture a bit you would notice that the account of the work of jesus on earth was recorded by four men theologically called the synoptics is that true matthew mark luke and john notice that in all of the accounts all of them began their their discourse either from a historic standpoint or from um the standpoint of his activity straight up like mark he summarized everything it was only apostle john who was able to trace back to the divinity of the christ all the rest started the son of this the son of that the son of that or Mark just started. By the time we get to Mark chapter 3, he's already discussing the ministry of Jesus. But John said, no, this is not a man. In the beginning. And notice, in 1 John 2, he started to, this is the record which we have received from the beginning. So John is a man of the spirit. He would always go back to the beginning and trace the divinity of Christ. So he says in John 1 verse 1, in the beginning, was the word the logos of god it says and the word was with god and the word 
was God. It says the same was in the beginning with God. It says, and through him were all things made and without him, outside of him was not anything made that was made. Then the Bible says in him was light and that light was the light of men. Are we together now? So we know for sure that in the beginning, the word, the logos of God, he's, he's, he's introducing Jesus and he starts not by calling him the son of Mary, the son of the carpenter, the one who walked the earth. He called him the word of God because his original name was and remains the word of God. Revelations 19, the one who rides upon the white horse and written upon him is a name that no man knew and that name is the word of God, the logos of God. Are we still together? Now I'm going to attempt to explore four platforms provided by the word that can help a man know God. Revelation tells us that God can be known, Jesus Christ can be known. And so we're going to look at the platforms available for believers to know God. And I pray that as we explore this very briefly, that God will really help us, that this would not just be a lecture, but it will be a revelation. Like the woman of God shared that the illumination that comes from the Holy Spirit will suddenly open our eyes, strengthen our convictions, that some of us will leave this meeting and go back home and you say, Lord, I will no longer pray on this issue. I know you. The, the, my knowledge of you makes it an embarrassment to talk about this issue again. Let my confidence alone challenge the issue. There are bigger matters to deal with. Satan loves attention. And ignorance is the system that provides that attention. So that you can reduce yourself from doing business with God in deep waters. And begin to wallow around the corridors of ignorance. Strengthen Satan and keep yourself in bondage forever. Knowledge is like a lift that will take you out of the grip of Satan. To a realm where you can deal with God on matters of territories and nations. Are we together? Number one, very quickly. The first platform provided for by scripture or by the dealings of God to know God. The first biblical platform to know God is scripture. Please write it down. I'm being very simple and basic because it's important that we get this. Scripture. The first platform given to help a believer know God is the scripture. Second Timothy, please, chapter 3 and verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Please let's hurry up. It says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus, and that from a child. I introduce you to scripture. Are we together now? As a platform to help you know God. That means I can meet a Muslim. I can meet a non-Christian. Whatever religion you come from. That if I hand over the Bible to you. It is part of my way of helping you know God. That when you open this scripture. As guided by the spirit. It can help men know God. Are we together now? The scripture reveals the character of God. Please write it down. The scripture reveals the character of God. The scripture also reveals the methodologies of God. This is very important. In knowing God, you must know his character and you must know his modus operandi, his methodologies. Why is this important? I'll tell you. Because there are many gods in the earth and listen, the Bible says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power, everybody say all power. All power, all power belongs to God, including the power used by a herbalist, including the power used by a necromancer, a diviner. They do not create, they only divert and manipulate. All power belongs to God. That means it is possible for another agency that is not Christ to still produce a result that looks like Christ. 
Now look up. I will show you why scripture is important in the knowledge of God. Moses stands before his half-brother Ramesses, who had now become the Pharaoh of Egypt, and says, Thus saith the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Ramesses says, Who is that? Because we have thousands of gods already, and we do not have a, that name in our archives. So who is this new deity that you met, that has the audacity to send you to the Pharaoh for an exodus of God's people? What proof did he give you? And Moses took his rod, threw it to the ground, it became a serpent, and Ramesses laughed. He said, Janus, Jambes, come and show this man that Egypt is the center of witchcraft. That was not a sign. You, you, you would think that after that, Pharaoh would kneel down and say, Israelites, go out of this place. He said, no. If it is to turn a rod to a serpent, that's an easy miracle. Janus and Jambes came and they turned the same thing into a rod. That means not everything that looks like God is God. So you must know the character of God. Are we together? Now listen, please. Just help those under the anointing there. Now listen, please. Now I'm sure that it happens to most people here. There are people who parade on Facebook as me. And sometimes they, you know, they scam people. And... Um, they can tell people I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and people are happy to donate money for all kinds of things and will later discover that they are scamming people, for instance. Now, it only happens to those who don't know me, for instance. Are we together now? Your knowledge, number one, I'm not on Facebook. I don't even know how to operate those things. Let me tell you. In all fairness, I'm a young man, but I have decided to get out of those distractions completely. Are we together? So whoever says I am me, that I'm most likely on a trip somewhere. So your knowledge of me becomes an immunity against those kinds of things. But I know whom I have believed. There is a way God walks. There is a way God cannot walk. The Bible says follow them who through faith and patience obtain. That means in the economy of God you will always need faith. When people obtain things and you do not see faith and patience, run away from them. Because in the knowledge of God, he will never replace that equation. He says, as you follow people, forget their results. Search for faith and patience. Are we getting blessed tonight? The knowledge of God. You must understand the character of God. For instance, the character of God is one of the ways that we judge prophecy. Are we together now? I can be a prophet, a genuine prophet, genuine prophet, but because of my limitation in spiritual understanding, I can look at, let me have one gentleman, anybody, come. Now, come and stand here, please. I'm just trying to show you the necessity of the knowledge of the character of God. I can be a prophet. Watch this. And I can look at this, my dear friend. And in the realm of the spirit, because of how prophetic things happen, I can see a spirit behind him. I can see him in a pit. I can see him anywhere. Now watch this. My interpretation is not only at the mercy of my vision. It's at the mercy of my spiritual understanding. It will take my knowledge of the character of God to decipher that prophecy and only communicate the dimension that is consistent with the Christ. Now I can look at this guy and see him in a coffin and I can interpret it and say, Mr. Man, you are dead. Now I saw correctly, but not knowing scripture has made my interpretation false. And this man now, the spirit of fear can leverage on something that should be a blessing and destroy this man. Because fear brings bondage. But remember that in the character of God, he's always after salvation. So no matter the disaster I see that my eyes was allowed to see, I must know that God is the God of salvation. That means my prophetic speaking must end up, no matter what I say, if salvation is not part of that equation, I missed it. Are we blessed now? The character of God. The Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger. Slow to anger, but he is rich in love. 
So every time a word comes to rebuke you, it is you, you at the back of your mind, you know that you are dealing with a father who is a giver. That even in his anger, the goal is not destruction, the goal is restoration. When he sent Jonah to Nineveh, the idea, Jonah refused to go because he said, God, I know you. I know you will forgive these people. I want to run away so that your anger will remain so that you will punish them. I know you will make me suffer for nothing. They will fast and you will forgive them. And that's exactly, that was what led, Jonah was not a rebel. Jonah was angry. Lord, why will you forgive these people? Because there was something about God he knew that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger. There are things when you know about God, there are things nobody can tell you again. Listen, Another revelation of God is that I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. The only way to understand that is marriage. Imagine a gentleman who is trying to look for a wife. You know what men do when they want women? They can stand in the rain for hours. And the lady says, I'm sorry for keeping you. No problem. I mean, water, anything for you. Now, watch this. That is the kind of picture the God of heaven is not ashamed to be vulnerable over his bride. He says, I have loved you. Man will sin and leave God away. And God will say, I will forget about you. And after one year, he will start looking for a prophet. He will say, please, can you go and tell these people, they have sinned against me, but I can't forget them. So why will God forget my family? Because my grandfather was a wizard. In the midst of that wizardry, he will still find a prophet in that family. In the midst, no matter the destruction, his love will reach beyond the dust and the rubbles of witchcraft and find somebody that will call upon the name of the Lord. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down. It is because of this knowledge of God, I can say rejoice not over me, my enemies. It is true that Jesus died, but he only died for three days. While you are talking about the one that died, he's back to life. So be careful when you conclude on people, because while you are celebrating the death, Jesus is already alive. He told two men in, Al in Emmaus, that he's already alive and is risen. When you know this about God, then you will be patient like he is. Sit down. Now listen to me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please make sure you are not just shouting for nothing. Understand what I'm teaching you. You know, I travel a lot. And sometimes I have lots of friends, prophets, apostles around the world. And sometimes they can call me and say, Apostle, um, where are you going to? And I say, I have a ministration. I have a ministration to catch up. And they say, please, I don't want you to go. Why? I just saw a ghastly motor accident. And they are not lying. They saw it. Now, if I follow every prophecy, I will not go anywhere again. Because every day the devil wants to kill me. That I know for sure. Now, listen very carefully. I'm not saying to despise prophecy. I'm giving you intelligence that comes from the knowledge of scripture. Are we together? But then I am also aware, listen to me. I am also aware that when God walks with you and holds your hand, you can be in fire. The three Hebrew boys, they didn't have to go out of fire to be saved. It is not all the time you go out of fire. Sometimes you need to just bring God into it and continue what you are doing. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. The jealousy of God. Listen, not everybody is a yielded vessel. So when God finds one, he will protect him with a level of jealousy men don't know. So when people talk like God will just kill anybody, you are joking. The jealousy of God. Do you know how hard it takes for God to make one servant become yielded? When you know that, you will know that it's not easy for God to fold his arms and allow the devil just sweep someone like that. No. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. 
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. So you find rest. You know the character of God from scripture. Are we together now? If a spirit comes as an angel of light and ministers fear to you and communicates what is not consistent with the character of Christ, you have the right to use the word to judge even angels. And so on the strength of your knowledge of scripture and who God is, you will be able to confront darkness. Scripture. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture. That means when I study the Bible, I'm not just trying to ease myself of the guilt of not being spiritual. I'm not just doing devotionals just because I am trying to look spiritual. No, it's more than that. It is, it is a token of my passion to know God. When I study scripture, I see God hidden in parables, hidden in history. And so I see the consistency of his methodologies. Look at me. In this Bible, God lifted people from nothing to something. So when God wants to lift me, I don't need to be in shock. I need to go back and who did he lift and how did he lift him? You are not the first to come from a place with no advantage. Ask Gideon. Ask Jesus himself. In this Bible is a description on how God lifts men. In this Bible, people sinned against God and were given to their enemies. But there was something they did. They manipulated a character of God they knew that forced him to come back to lift them up. There is something you can know about God. It is on the strength of that knowledge that we can say, for we know that all things work together. People were given to their enemies in this scripture. And there was something they invoked about God that brought them victory. They stole from people. Job lost his estate and lost his money and lost everything in one day. By the time we get to chapter 42 and verse 10, his friends prayed for him. Job prayed for his friends and God restored his fortune. So I know that he's a restorer. Not just because a man of God said it. A card here is a testament of his character to restore. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation. When you look at me and say tomorrow I'm going to die, you may be right. But then I go to Isaiah 38 and I see the discourse between Hezekiah that, it, that a true prophet came and met him and said, you are dying. He said, okay, I've had you. And he did business with God. And within minutes, God sent the prophet back. That means I can add to my life. There is something I can do here. What do you know about God? And what don't you know about God? Fear thrives on the loophole, the gaps in our knowledge of God. There is something we do not know about God that empowers fear. If I see the spirit of death now, I will pass it and it will pass me. I will not run away. He's going about doing his work. At least I know it has access to the earth. Are we together? There is something about God when you know He can multiply what is small. The character of God. Five loaf, two fish, and it can feed 5,000 people. When a woman has this revelation of God, she can fry Akara and build a bungalow with it. And you are wondering, is it really the Akara? No. There is an understanding that with God, five loaves and two fish can feed 5,000 people. Listen, your life is at the mercy of the revelation of scripture that you have. Are we together? So scripture is one platform to know God. God bless you, sir. Let's hurry up. Number two. The second platform to know God is through the names of God. Please write it down. The names of God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Exodus chapter 6, please. Exodus chapter 6. God, now please look up. When God appeared to Moses, the Bible says that Moses was tending the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law. Are we together? And then Moses sees a bush that is burning and yet not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. And when God saw that he had turned, he said, Moses, take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground. And then the discourse begins. Now, Moses was trained to be the next Pharaoh. I hope you know, historically speaking. He was to be the next Pharaoh of Egypt. So he was not ignorant about the entire Scientology and the activities of witchcraft. He was being mentored to be the next Pharaoh. Now, he hears from this deity who calls himself the God of the Hebrews. And then he says, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, hold on. Who should I tell Pharaoh has sent me? Very intelligent man. Because I know Pharaoh, he will ask me. And which of the gods are you? This is what he's saying. Because in ancient times, they never had a revelation that one God is all-powerful. That, that theology does not exist in witchcraft. There is mastery, specialty like doctors. Are we together now? So you had the God of fertility. You had the God of war. The God of thunder. So if you need help, you would trace the testament of the gods. To see who specializes in which one. And then the method for invoking him is also there. Are we together now? So they had thousands of gods. Now when he said Moses I'm sending you. Moses said out of the thousands which one are you? And God says ah ah I am that I am. Now that's a scary revelation. Because Moses had never heard that. What is I am that I am? In other words Moses I am the summation of all the dimensions those gods are trying to mimic. The one who stands before you is not one who needs any assistance. I am that I am. I am the summation of every dimension that you ever see in any deity. He says, go and tell him. I can become anything and anyone you desire. You do not need to know the God of fertility and then know the God of thunder. I can do everything. I control the weather. I control men. I control the earth. That's why he used the nine plagues. Remember, all of those plagues were managed by different gods, but it was the same person who was causing the, the plagues. The God of the Hebrews. Listen. God is unlimited unfathomable truly speaking but because of his love to help men know him he fragments himself dimensionally so that he reveals himself to men dimensionally are we together now so the nation of israel in their pursuit of god he began to break himself to different dimensions and every dimension they saw they captured it in a name so when they saw him as righteousness they called him sikenu when they saw his healing dimension, they called it Rapha. Are we together now? Yes. Sabaoth. And all of these names is an attempt to capture dimensions of God. And do you know that every generation has a mandate to leave a new name of God to other generations coming? We are not just to look at the Bible and say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jehovah, Rapha. What name will our children know that we give? The, your experience, your lifetime is too long to not have an experience with God to find a name. That name doesn't have to be a word. The name can be a song. The name can be a sentence. There are mothers here who when they meet them and they say your child is in ICU, they laugh and raise a song. They got that song after five years of not having that child 
that experience pushed them to a point when they sang that song god told them i will give you a son so now that that song is in trouble they know the name they can invoke that will call on that god in other words where is the god that came after five years is he not able to take my child from icu you are in trouble if you know another man's god you must press to a point where he becomes your God. But the people that do know their God. Are we together? The names of God. The God of Abraham does not manifest as the God of Isaac. No. It's the same God. But it's not the same dimension. The God of Isaac does not manifest as the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob does not manifest as the God of Elijah. No, they are not the same. So when you call on the God of Abraham, there is a way God moves. When you call on the God of Isaac, there is a way God moves. When you call on the God of Jacob, there is a way God moves. When you call on the God of Apostle Tanjuma Musa, there is a way he moves. When you call on the God of whoever, there is a way he moves. Your experience must make God attach a dimension to your name. Are we together? This shall be my name forever. The names of God. He breaks his names, himself into names, so that you can study him. The Bible says in Psalm 24, The earth is the Lord's, and its fullness thereof. The walls and all they that dwell therein. He says, for it has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the waters. Then he says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He says, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Listen, he says, whoever that person is, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Then he says that there is a generation. This is the generation that seeks thy face. O Jacob, other versions will say, O God of Jacob. So when it comes to encounter, the personality that God uses to describe that dimension is Jacob. And to understand this, you must go to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32, where Jacob wrestled with God and said, I will not let you go. Until then, there was no God of Jacob. There was only God of Isaac and God of Abraham. But a man created a name. God had to brand his impact with Jacob and said every time you want to have an encounter with God, understudy Jacob. The God of Jacob. The Bible says Jacob wrestled with God all through that night. He says, leave me for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He says, what is your name? He says, Jacob. And then he says, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched his tie. And the Bible says, he disjointed him. And then the son arose and he called the name Peniel, the face of God. So when you want to seek the face of God, you don't look for the God of Abraham. No. There is no encounter there. There is covenant. When you look for the God, Abraham did not know God. Abraham walked with God in covenant. Jacob had an encounter, a wrestle. Are we together? We know God by knowing his name. Now, let me tell you why this is very important. The Bible says, it's God who is at work in us both to will and to do. If the Spirit of God wants to heal in this place now, let me tell you what he will do. Because he responds to his names that are called. His name is his dimension that you are invoking. The Spirit of God who knows that it is God's desire to begin to heal will make the worship people to start singing songs that invoke that name. Because he wants to come as that God. So any dimension of God you want to see, you invoke it in prayer and you invoke it in worship. You can't
cannot begin to sing about God who heals and then he comes as God who prospers. No, he must answer to his name. Look up. What's your name, my friend? Huh? Come again. Reuben. Grace. Is that your name? No. What's your other name? Tell me all your names. Huh? Chinemi. Chinemi. Chinemi Reuben. Now, if I call you Reuben, come. I'm sure there is a nickname they call you. Don't, don't say it. Now, there is a, if this man is married, there is a name only his wife can call him. It's none of your business. Are we together now? There is a name his brothers can call him. There is a name that is official. So his response will not be the same. Are we together? My mom is here. My biological mom. That's my mom seated there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now watch this. My mom calls me her father. Now, of course, I, I know what that means. But there is a name my mom will call me. She's my mother. You will not call me that name. Are we together? There is a name you call me that invokes the office I occupy. Thou son of David. He didn't say Jesus. He would have died there without healing. Thou son of David. I invoke that dimension. You are king. You have dominion. I forget about the name Mary gave you. You are a royal one. It is, it is within the power of any king to set any man free. Thou son of David. I invoke that dimension. And he responded to him. Our names represent different dimensions are we together someone can call him bros that's a name it means i'm your friend you don't heal a man with the name bros are we together thank you so there is a name Wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name. The name is not Jesus. I hope you know. <laughs> no, the name is not Jesus. Jesus is the name that was there. Are footballers called Jesus today? Their names don't carry power. If Jesus were Nigerian, he would have a name that has nothing to do. It just means it is the root word Joshua, Jehoshua, the one who saves. It's just a description of his office. The Bible says a coronation was held for Jesus in heaven. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. That a coronation was held and a name was given to him. An office. And it says at the mention of that name. That every knee should bow and every tongue would confess. Of things in the heavens, in the earth and under the earth. Are we together? And the name, it says that they must confess that Jesus is. That's the name, Lord. The word Lord means absolute owner. The earth is the... That's the name that was given to him. That Jesus has now become both Lord and Christ. That is the name given to him. So we know him through his names. A few minutes and we'll be done. Number three. The third way we know God is through the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, please, and verse 15. Colossians 1 and verse 15. The Bible calls Jesus, please look up, the image of the invisible God. The, in, the God that I could not see. Now Jesus has come as the expression of that invisible God. The word logos means the thoughts of a man that seeks expression. The thoughts of a man personified. The fullness of the Godhead represented bodily in the Christ. Are we together? Yes. So Jesus is called the image of the invisible God. Now, if, if you have a mirror and you cannot see me but the mirror can capture me, you can look at the mirror and accurately describe me. 
Because the mirror tries to give my image. Are we together now? Now it's interesting for you to know that when it comes to being the image of God, it is not only Jesus who is the image of the invisible God. The church is also the image. He only started the journey as a template for us to see. Now we are the continuity and the extension. That means when I step in somewhere and they don't know who God is, I tell them, just give me 10 minutes of your time and look at my life. Any part of my life should be able to describe something about God. That's why he gives us power. That's why he gives us wisdom. That's why he gives us prosperity. That's why he gives us intelligence. All these are equippings that will help us to become worthy images. Are we blessed tonight? Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1, please. God who in sundry times, he says, and diverse manners, who had spoken to us in time past by the prophets, had in these last days, it says, spoken to us through his son, whom he had appointed heir over all things. Are we together? Go to verse 3, please. It says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Jesus is a representation. Now, when Jesus walked the earth, he came as a correction of our perception about God. Because until Jesus came, men could not really know God. And so they would attribute both the things that were of God and were of other spirits to God Almighty. And so Jesus said, no, watch my life and correct like a marking scheme. Everything you see me do is what God does. Whatever I do not do, God does not do. So he started correcting their perception. Until then, they had all kinds of ideas about God. But Jesus came as the revelation of the Father. So you would look at Jesus and correct what they told you about God. You would look at Jesus and begin to reorder your understanding. He did not just come to die. He came as the logos of God. An expression, a revelation. So when I see Jesus, I see God. When I look at Jesus as revealed, the Son of God, I can see the love of God. I can see the compassion of God. Are we together? Now let me tell you, Jesus is greater than any apostle, greater than any prophet, greater than any theology. Whatever is not in the Christ is not a revelation of what is in the Father. Because the father attested that this is my beloved son. And he said, I am well pleased. Jesus. is by the well with a woman. And then he looks at her. And people would think he would condemn and throw her away. And God represented in the Christ, Jesus. He now walks with this woman and leads her to salvation. Never did he see anybody in need. Who truly desired his help that he did not touch. He does not discriminate because Jesus did not discriminate. Hallelujah. So whether or not people know your father, know your mother, know your background. You are dealing with a God that's revealed through Christ. Whose, whose love is rich unto all. No respecter of persons. Somebody's life is changed. In the name of Jesus. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. I, 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 you will never be, never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life must change. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life must change. 
can know that you have met him by what leaves you. You can know that you know him by what changes. Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. I look at Jesus and I can see the love of the Father. I look at Jesus and I can see the might. Every time a miracle did not happen in scripture, it was not the problem of the power and the might of God. It was the unbelief and the dishonor of the people. So I know for sure that I'm dealing with a God who is not scared. He's not scratching his head on his throne, wondering what to do about my situation. He is the all-wise God. So I approach him with that understanding that he is limitless. This is the basis for my receiving. So when a word comes that God wants to liberate me, I don't sit down saying, Lord, are you aware of my situation? Uh -uh. My life must change. My life must change. Hmm. My life must change. My life must change. I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change The revelation of Jesus Not just the visionary revelation of Jesus That I can look at Jesus and know God. I can look at Jesus. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Bible says he is full of grace and truth. That means I'm not afraid to follow him because there is no deception in him. He's not scamming me to deceive me one day. When I leave all to follow him, I know there is a worthy consolation. My knowledge of him gives me that confidence. He does not use men and dump men. So while I am following him and I look stupid momentarily, my confidence is that you are following a God who is benevolent enough to sort every aspect of your life while you seek him. This gives the confidence to follow him with reckless abandonment. It may not make sense, but you burn the bridge behind you and say, let's go. I know you and I trust you enough. The disciples said, we have left all to follow you. It was a revelation of what God does with men who follow him. And he said, let me tell you what God does. Verily, verily, I say unto you, no man who has left father, mother, possession for the kingdoms and for my sake, that you will not in this life. There is a provision to make my life a wonder in this life while I seek him. So God does not make men serve him and become failures. I see that in the Christ. So I expect to win and to be victorious while I serve him. But the people that do know their God shall be struck. Number four, and then we'll pray. I already sense a very mighty anointing here. Can you please give me volume, David? Give me volume. The fourth way to know God is through your experience. Your experiences can reveal a dimension of God. Hmm. First John chapter 1 verse 1. First John 1 verse 1, please. First John 1 verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have, talk to me please, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. Listen, in this kingdom, you not only believe God, you can taste and see. There is an experience to our dealings with God. Your experiences can reveal a dimension of God to you that no sermon can reveal. There is a pain factor that when you go through in life, it gives you a revelation of God that no divination can take out. Are we together? Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. 
my heart, my flesh thirsts for you to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. There are things that when you go through in life, listen, let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, there are people who are too innocent to be used by God. There is a pain requirement. There is a track record. I hope you like what I'm saying. Away with that nonsense that makes you believe that God just calls you and uses you. No, you come as you are, but you are not used as you are. As you, are. you come as you are, but you are made. The making is more than a lecture. It's a track record. It's a fondness of affliction. That's why the Bible says, Paul said, let no man trouble me. I pass through the school. Upon my body is a mark, a testament of endurance. You don't just tell demons, go, just because you saw it in the Bible. There is a track record. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Right here is where many believers make a mockery of themselves. It's like driving. When you are attending driving lesson, they'll say when they when, you know you match the brake, you say, Oh, I can't. You are you are almost in a hurry to say, teacher, go away until you get into that vehicle and you don't even know what you are pressing again. It looks simple until you try it. Let me tell you, this anointing thing you see that people talk about and just make it look as if it just comes on people. The price for life is death. The price for life is not suffering, the price for life is death verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone this is a language that our generation does not want there are some there are some prayers you don't pray there are some things that cannot come by impartation you must follow through the door of death it takes the cross to get to the throne Hiya, hiya. The price of death, your experience revealing the Christ. Listen, God will not just make a generation listen to you because you have what to say, it takes the track record of blood and pain and death. This is my beloved son. What was he before? What was he in a manger? What was he at age 12? The healing anointing will not just come because hands were laid on you. Do you know what it means to be sick? If not, you are not qualified to be in the healing ministry. How then can you build the compassion that releases the anointing? Compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. There are times that God will pass you through what you will be saving people from. No, no amount of prayer will deliver you. He will grant you grace to pass through. I teach you sound doctrine to prepare you. That is why you can be talking against God's anointed. Whether you are right or wrong, God will act like he's not seeing it. Because there is blood dripping from that altar. A testament of death. Listen to what I'm telling you. Help those under the anointing. I'm already seeing. Please help me. We are going to. I will take time to minister to you. But I want you to bring them out. I just saw light. And I'm seeing there is an anointing. I'm seeing the number 21. Please bring them out. 21 people. I'm seeing an anointing. Come on them. Please bring them out now. Sheba lakatuza bradizatadiyanada. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is here. I cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. I cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, 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 hey. Yahweh, Yahweh.
for life is death the price for all of god is all of you not your heart not your intelligence not your certificate all of you the price for the anointing is not just fasting and prayer it's death that you want to carry the grace the power the glory of god that speaks over a territory it takes more than titles it's a track record of death bring them out we're rounding up tonight how can you be the same no please hold on please don't miss tomorrow's meeting i'll take our time to minister but don't don't miss tomorrow's meeting but i want to pray um can you spare me a few minutes sir now please i want you to help them they are going to start running physically i'm seeing the spirit of delay being broken and a grace for speed coming on people they will start running now please help them so they don't injure themselves in the crowds they are not just here please help them an anointing is coming on you i crush delay by this apostolic and prophetic anointing i don't care for how long now the lord is that spirit i come with a rod of a higher priesthood and i declare in the name that is above all name bring them out i crush delay here at this conference never to be the same again help that woman please i will never be safe have touched your grace my life must change i will never be the same my life must change i will never say I will never I be will never be the same I'm touching your grace My life must change Hallelujah Who is Garba? Garba I'm hearing a name Garba G-A-R-B-A -A. We're going to round up I'm not taking too much time I'm hearing that name Garba Garba Who is Janet? Janet J-A-N like Janet please who is that I just want to talk to that you are a mother you are an elderly woman who is that is, is there someone like that madam I crushed the power of witchcraft over this woman's life excuse me in the name of Jesus here at this conference you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life in the name of Jesus Christ there are two people in the choir the anointing of the Spirit is coming on them now bring them out grace for you never to be the same again madam where are you coming from where are you coming from from just here I want to pray for you the Lord is telling me that oppression has come to an end in your life I don't know you from anywhere but mama can I speak to you that in the name of Jesus hear me between now and January 15th write it down your life will change in a way that will surprise you this is by the Spirit of God the anointing is coming on you right now this lady I'm seeing an angel just pour oil on this lady and the Lord is saying the yoke of oppression is gone let it go now I command that devil to leave you now here at global flames the Spirit of God is visiting you taking you to heights unimagined in the name of Jesus There is a pastor here jo please just give me a few minutes i'm seeing a strong anointing coming on a man of god you are you are not a member of this church this ministry but i'm seeing a strong anointing i don't know where the pastors are but i'm seeing please if that happens i want to speak to that person 
these are pastors here there is a man of god please bring him out bring them i'm seeing a strong anointing never to be the same again i don't know your ministry i don't know what you do but you're about to step into a dimension of grace i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before the glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your glorious majesty Yabonena kawo Sujana nena kawo Sarki salama Sarki kawjana Look at me. Sir, you are stepping into a strange realm of the prophetic. I don't know you. You are an elderly man. But the Lord is saying I should prophesy to your life and shift you to a dimension in the spirit. I stretch my hands towards you that you drink of this ancient wine that has turned people into signs and wonders receive that grace step into a new dimension of the anointing you're a pastor you're a pastor sir i don't know you but i'm seeing a strong teaching anointing that is coming upon you and the lord is saying that he's going to begin to take you to territories you are in just here your domicile in just yes sir i'm seeing god opening doors for you that are beyond the shores of this city Amen. shout jesus as loud as you can go ahead jesus! step into that anointing step into that grace you will never be the same in the name of jesus christ somebody will run out now by the spirit please hold the person i'm seeing an anointing physical like running physical to run out please i want to prophesy to the person I don't mean to take your time you know when the Holy Spirit just comes like this sometimes we don't have the time I must respect the time I'm giving but the Lord is just putting something in one two three four five six years without a child who is that one two three four five the woman is here I'm seeing an angel of the Lord leading me here is there someone like that come your time to give birth has come come Sir King Salam, Sir King, stand up, my dear. You're a member of this church. You are coming from somewhere else. Listen, go and prepare for a baby boy. Look at me. His name is Samuel. God is going to give you a child. He's going to be a great prophet of God. Stand up. I don't know you. I've not seen you from anywhere. But thank God you came. You see why it's good to come to church. I was glad when they said unto me let listen please hear me let me say this up front i i know that many of you are seeing the manifestations of the spirit of god and you know i know that there are people who do all kinds of fake things but don't you dare make a mistake of thinking this man standing before you is doing some things fetish you don't know the price that goes into carrying the anointing 
not everyone is fake there are men who have paid their price in righteousness and have carried something that is for nations so let me just say it up front so that you don't even entertain any demonic thought that any manifestation is of the devil I was born and bred in this city not everybody is a wizard not everybody is fake there are people who have paid their price genuinely and have been given graces for nations my dear I speak to you in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you that you remember not the former things I open I decree and declare I don't care what is in your womb I declare according to the time of life go and return with your child in the name of Jesus hallelujah bring the lady for me that will shout now loud to the hearing of everybody the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tents of the righteous ah, God is breaking chains in this place breaking chains in this place when they ask you where did you go to you say I'm coming from church you don't get this in a beer parlor you don't get this in a lecture room it is only in the house of God mama in the name of Jesus I prayed for you ah The Lord is asking me I'm seeing are there commissioners in the state I'm seeing a commissioner in a ghastly motor accident and we have to pray this thing I'm seeing the Lord is showing me now who is that coming is there a commissioner here sir I'm not a prophet of doom I stand by the God of heaven please you don't have to kneel stand sir I'm going to pray for you I don't know you but I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident with a truck and I'm seeing everybody in that car dead but like I taught you the purpose of revelations like this if we cannot avert what we see then there is no dominion the real proof of dominion is the ability to superimpose the workings of darkness we stand as a church and in the name of Jesus sir I pray for you and your family by the God of heaven you are secured now and secured forever in the name of Jesus hallelujah there is ah, something is leaving this man he will never be the same this man will rise up and be a changed man there is an age-long pattern in your family that just got broken this thing people rise up they get to the top and then they come down in shame this is what God is ending right now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord because of this program write it down I'm seeing the police arrest one two three four five people in just who have been kidnapping I'm seeing this thing happen write it down write it down there are a group there are people kidnapping but there are a group of people who are just kidnapping and they will ask to bring maybe uh, uh, 10 million or some wicked amount and say bring I stand by the God of heaven let the earth fight them from this night hallelujah let's round up your brother is missing who is that you've not seen him this is at least two years he's been missing and he's not been seen is there someone like that we have to pray. hold on please is that true your brother huh brother your immediate junior younger brother, brother. Yes, where sir. are you from madam i am from Kogis. 
I'm Yoruba, but, but, I stay. but you stay in just here. Where was he? Where did he get missing? It's more than two years. It's more than two years. Do you believe he will come back? Yes. Go and write it. Prepare to see your brother. The power of God is going to come on one of you. I have to round up. But I'm seeing a mighty anointing. Just come on one of you here. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, that embargo is broken now over your family. Forever. It will never return to you again. By the Spirit of the Lord. I pray for everyone here. For whatever reason you came in the name of jesus let there be liberty for you you will go back and you will return tomorrow with all inspiring testimonies in the name of jesus please look at me the lord sent me here by his spirit tonight to let us know there is more that can be in god and i thank god for the leadership of your man of God inspiring you to see that there is more more than just Christianity more than just praying and fasting there is a depth of encounter and conviction we must come out with the nations are not waiting for explanations they are waiting for a dimension of kingdom power and glory some of you will go back and this encounter will linger some of you will go back home and find things that were missing you will see it back waiting for you at home i'm speaking to you by the spirit of the living god in the name of jesus christ let me round up i pray for everyone here under the sound of my voice whether you are inside or outside i declare between this night and tomorrow return with a strange testimony please believe i'm not just speaking in the name of jesus i decree and i declare over you whatever challenge that you came here with this is the house of god return back with testimonies i plant in you a hunger for spiritual things that from tonight your hunger and your passion for God will jack back to life. For some of you, your prayer life has gone down for months. Let it come back to life now. For some of you, your word study life has gone down. Let it come back to life now. For some of you, you've compromised on your values and what you stand for. The grace to be restored back. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please let me encourage you. I want you to invite everyone you know in and around just tomorrow. Let's set this place on fire tomorrow. This is called Global Flames. Except God is not God. That whatever comes with you here tomorrow, it must bow to the name and the Lordship of Christ. Listen. Whether there is space or not, if you will sit on the zinc, sit on the zinc. Invite your families, invite and pay anyone's transport. And say, find your way and come here. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes. And keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you